This is the plaintiff, Jessica Jean Francois. She says the defendants are 11 year old son's half sister. They have the same father. The defendant basically stole their dog, refuses to give it back, and that's so not right. She doesn't want the money, she wants the dog. But if she can't get it back, then she wants the $1,800 the dog's worth. That's why she's suing. This is the defendant, Sequoia Perkins. She says her brother brought the dog over to her house after their father passed away, and she noticed he was being neglected. His hair was matted, he smelled awful, and she didn't think twice about keeping him so she could nurse him back to health. Now the pup is happy and healthy, and she's not about to return him to be neglected again. She's accused of being a dog gone, dog napper. All parties, please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant is her son's half-sister and she stole their dog. The defendant says her brother brought the dog to her house and the dog was being neglected. It's the case of my dog is dog gone. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, uh, Jessica Francois, Yes. you're suing Sequoia Perkins for $1,800, the value of a dog you say she stole from your family or the return of the dog, which is what you really want. Tell me what's going on here. What is the relationship between you two? She's the sister, she's a half sister of my son, okay. of my um, minor children. So you have, you have a son, and that son's father is also her father, correct? Yeah, I have three All children. Right. How old are you? 44. Okay, and this, your son is how old? He, um, he's 11. Okay, so big age difference. Uh, had you had a relationship with him before everything that we're gonna talk about now? Somewhat. Okay. So let's talk about the day, um, I am very sorry for everyone's loss, the day that your father passed away. Tell me what happened. Um, basically, I took him to his doctor's appointment. We left on the way back. He were giving me instructions on how to get back to her house, and he went into cardiac arrest while we were in traffic. In the car? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, I pulled over, I called 911 immediately, and they walked me through, give, giving him the chest compressions. And, you know, the um, first responders came. They took him out the car. They started working on him. The ambulance came, and then they took him Was to the Was he alive hospital. at that point or no? no? I'm so sorry about this. Thank you. And I'm sorry for you, too. Um, he was a part of your son's life. Yeah, my son was in the car with them. When this happened? Yes. Lordy, lordy. All right. So now... You had a dog. The dog's name is? Man. And how did you come into possession of that dog? The father, he gave it to us because um, his mother passed away and his brother was on tour. So his, um, the aunt allowed us to have the dog. Um, so the aunt gave, okay, the aunt is also your aunt? Yeah, it's my aunt Rowena. All right, and the aunt gave the dog to? to Willie, the father. The, er, their father, okay. So was Willie living with you? Yes, I was oh, wait, with And he had been living with you for how long? For, um, let me see, he's 10, about 13, okay. 13 years. I was All with right. him for 15. So, and the dog came into your possession when? Or Willie's possession when? 2015. 2015. And from 2015 until the time that this happened, which happened when? What, when did this happen? December 2018. Of 2018. Um, the dog was solely in the possession of your household. Correct. All right. Then what happened? So that weekend, I, I believe it was a Thursday when he passed, my son wanted it to go to, you know, their house. And I, you know, I, I didn't think anything of it because they were together so they can grieve and mourn together. So on his way out, he was like, can I take man? Once again, sure, you know. He comes back Sunday without man. He says that, you know, Shakoya says, let them, you know, have him for a week so that the, um, she has a dog, they can play together. And next weekend, he'll come home with it. Did you pick up the phone and call her and say, what are you doing? Like, because that happened without your consent? Yeah. Actually, I didn't pick it up, pick up the phone. I texted her. Okay. Do you have those texts? Yes. Let me see those. 
Why did you keep the dog? I explained to her How did this even come up, that you would take your little brother's dog? When the dog came to my house, well, when he got in the car, he had a bad odor. When you pick him up, you can feel his ribs. I gave him a bath as soon as he got back to my house. So I could not get the smell out. So I had to wait another week, do another washing. I'm sorry, it this is someone times. else's dog, it right? It's times. not your dog at this point. So my why dad. did you keep the dog? Uh, what I did was call my aunt and ask her. The it's one not who your gave aunt's dog. Dad. It's been at their house for five years. I don't understand what you don't understand. How's it, what has this done to the relationship you are supposed to have with your brother, who you shared this horrible, life-defining well, moment? I didn't do anything to the relationship that I have with my brother. Oh, the boy doesn't she care? He it. comes to see you all the time? He doesn't want his dog back? Even if he wanted to come see me, she wouldn't let him. She took well, the phone Well, right, him. but what do you think it's done to it? Let me just say, have you ever met a boy with a dog at 11? What do you think this has done? So if the dog's being neglected, um, can the person who sees that happening take the dog for its protection? Absolutely not. Why? What's to stop me from saying he's not neglecting his dog and I just, it's a cute dog, I'm taking it. Well, what's to stop you is he's much bigger than you and he'd kick your ass. <laughs> How fast is he though? <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. Did you talk to him after this happened? I talked to him, mm hmm And what'd he say? He told me that his mother's boyfriend was abusing him. And yeah. I had to something about that. How come you never that? mentioned that in any of your pleadings? Never mentioned that until right this second. We weren't here for that. We were here for the oh, dog. We were here for, to try to figure out why you kept someone else's dog. And you never once said what you just said. Let's see, maybe it's in the text, I don't know. I'd like to see the text in your phone, not on, I mean, I'll see the paper, but please get it in your phone. Because I, people tend to just photocopy what they want me to see. Are these screenshots? I don't want to see screenshots. These I want to see it text? in, I want to see your actual text. Do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, but um, why can't you just show me the actual text in there? Because it was deleted. Just give me what you got. You know, that's nowhere near as good as actually seeing the text in their own in their own form. Do you have the text between the two of you? Pull it out, please, on your cell phone. Mm, that's good. Thank you. I have consulted with my family members about bringing man back, specifically the sole person, my Aunt Rowena, who told me to keep man. Do you have anything here from Aunt Rowena? No, she yeah, has and my phone she's number. not the person who's, hold, who's had the dog for five years. She's specifically the person who has no ownership is, interest in the dog, because he was grandmother Inez's dog, and Uncle Charles gave him to my dad, which means he is my dad's family pet. To which you respond, uh, she continues, "I'm not trying to start nothing with you or threaten you. I was told you plainly state to you the facts. All my dad's electronics, black bookcase, money." out of his safe, his important papers, and whatever else is in your, oh, man was hostage to other money and, and documents. His important papers and whatever else is in your house you have, whether you want to give it up or not, is not an issue. Seems like an issue because you mentioned it. Someday you will have to release all his important belongs, belongings, no stress, love. I have no, you answer, I have none of his money. He still has money in the bank. I also have none of his important papers. If papers for his court case, with his apartment, it's here, but policies, et cetera, I don't have here. I don't know where you got your info from. Then in February, my lawyer needs your address. Tell your lawyer to call me. What does he want with me? If you want to know I am the executor of my father's estate, then yes, I am. My father's wife have agreed to let me handle it. Did your father have a will? No. Did you go to probate court? We we're in probate court right now. He had some situation where he was coming, coming into money from my grandmother's estate, and that's how he wound up having the estate, his estate lawyer. And by the way, does I, stop, stop. When you say you have been named executor, it's the court that would name you executor. Did the court name you executor? Not at this moment. So you're one still... out at this moment. That that's like you know being a little bit pregnant. You either are or you aren't. <laughs> So you are not the executor. Who is the executor? My father's wife. OK. Now, did your father's wife as executor send out letters to your son about, how many kids does your father have? 12. If there is an estate and he dies without a will, no one of you has a more right to it than the other of you. There are three kids over there that are his kids. Have you received a call from a lawyer? No, I called him. Okay, and so did you give him the date of birth of your children? Yes. So 
your children are part of the probate case. Yes. This stuff can drag. Um, but we, you know, we kind of have a problem. And the problem that we have is that I see it your way, that that dog has been there for a long time, and it's kind of ridiculous that she thinks she's better than you and better at bathing a dog and better at, dogs are property. There is a question here about whether this is you and your son's dog or his dog, the, the deceased dog. That's a reason why we have, I, I, don't, I saw that you had your son write a letter, and I'm very moved by it, and I'm very sorry, because I can't imagine a worse action on that woman's part than to deprive her little brother of his dog a week after his dad dies, especially when I see it in the text how it went down. Text after text about, yeah, I want my money. I want his money. I want it. You've kept things, so yeah, I'm not giving you I mean, it's insanity. But here's where the problem lies. There is a court of law that is already handling all of this stuff, and it's the probate court. And that's the court that should handle this stuff, because it sounds like that dog was given to your deceased husband or mate or whatever it was. You understand? So I can't just say, give him back the dog. And I can't just say, it goes directly to her. And I, I can't, I'm not in a position to do that, because if it's his property, and although we love our dogs and there's a lot of emotion involved here, if it's his property, then the property has to be disposed of by a court in the probate court. So I'm going to dismiss this case without prejudice for you bringing it up in probate court. And before you leave, if you need any assistance with that, our legal staff here will give you some assistance so that you have some guidance, Thank OK? You. Based on that, I'm the dismissing this case without prejudice. So in a rather interesting twist, this case has been dismissed by Judge Melian because the case is going to be handled by probate court. It has to. Yeah. What do you think now? What are you thinking? It's going to probate court. So you understand the situation? Yes, I with do. With the dog. She still got the dog, though, right? Yes, yeah, she does. And I guess at this point, there's nothing you can do. No, there's nothing. But I'm going to probate, probate court. Obviously. Do what the judge said. I'm really sorry for you. Ms. Perkins, if you'll step out here. Um, obviously, this the dog issue is going to be part of the court situation now, and in that case, yes, that's what but the, you've still got the dog, right? already told me that the dog was part of my dad's probate case. Yeah, yeah. So, but you've got the puppy, and you're not going to give him back? Home. No. Well, good luck to you. Thank okay? You. Thank you very much. Very interesting twist, Harvey. What do you think? Okay, Doug, I mean, we've seen these cases from time to time where the judge says it's dismissed without prejudice, means that the person can file again if they need to. In this case, it was just filed in the wrong court. This should have been a probate case because the probate court has exclusive jurisdiction.